Hello everyone and welcome to the last episode of C5 Initiating Contact with Extraterrestrials. This is part six of the series. With this episode, I'll be going into, let's say, making contact as a group, some of the perspectives and takes on that, as well as different types of races and phenomena and things that can happen during making contact as well. So, you can initiate contact at any time, day or night, individually or in a group, although a group can be more effective. There is no requirement for a set number of people, but having a small contact team of between 5 and 20 people is good. You want the group to be on the same level as much as possible and willing and able to work toward having a cohesive collective consciousness. Anyone who just wants to see crafts or other phenomena or who has doubt about the reality of CE5 can hinder the contact experience because they are there for the wrong reasons. Also, they can mess with the energy of the overall group. Don't get me wrong, I understand people want to see something, but when initiating contact, it's about taking things to the next level, initiating peaceful contact and creating a dialogue with the greater family of man. For some, you might want to make an expedition out of it, perhaps a two to five day camping trip, during the day, you can remote view and meditate and keep an eye out for phenomena. At night, you can skywatch while going back and forth between remote viewing and meditation. Basically, you want to get to the point where you can remote view and meditate in an active, awakened state. In this state, you will know when and where to look while taking notice of changes in the environment around you, such as temperature changes, sounds, or changes in the atmosphere. Some people think I'm out all night looking for crafts but I know what time to go outside and see them, both during the day and at night. I've been vibrated onto crafts and have physical and or mind-to-mind -mind interactions with them. This happens during the day and night, basically anywhere at any time. You don't have to go into nature, although it's definitely better. If you pick a location for a trip, choose a peaceful environment with good vibes, you can do see a fire from home, like I said, or out in the bush anywhere, but each location will have pluses and minuses. For example, in town or the city you have light pollution, commercial and military activity, noises and other distractions, and most of the time a limited view of the sky. So if you do it from home and your home is situated in a town or city, these are the factors you have to deal with. If you decide to go out of town, pick a location with a huge view of the sky, open and with limited distractions, minimal aircraft activity and away from noise. It might be land that has been considered sacred by those who live there, going back a long time. When arriving at any location, always ask the ancient spirits of the place, using thought or out loud, for permission to be there. You'll be able to tell by thought or by feeling whether you are welcomed or not. Also state your intention. You might interact with an ancient civilization or beings that also came to Earth long ago or those who are there from other worlds and or might be residing in a different dimension. I have to add here that you might want to remote view or do a contact meditation before going outside or to the location if you're going out in the field. This can help you set your own intention and or help with the intention of the group if everyone does this. You might even receive insight on when and where activity could happen. Most importantly, when entering or arriving at a location, Ask the land, Gaia, and any native spirits, beings, and nature spirits for a blessing to be on the land. Out of respect, state your purpose of being on the land and ask for permission. Yes, we can make contact individually, but this is taking it now to a couple of different levels. Initiating it, and also initiating it as a group. Also, there's a lot that's unseen to us that surround us. And when going out to locations, there are beings residing right next to us in different frequencies. So a lot of these places that you might go to that are ancient sites, uh, landmarks that are out in nature, there are intelligences and beings everywhere. We could say fairies, elementals, ancient beings from other civilizations or spirits still residing in certain spots, even caretakers and guardians. This is very important. And this can hinder the contact if you're going out there and you're not aware of these things. So asking for permission, um, being respectful of the place, these are big things that I recommend to people when going out to any site or location. Safety and hazards check. 
So what I'm referring to here is basically being aware of the area that you're at. Best to get there earlier in the day, checking out for just safety things, whether there's holes in the ground in certain spots, just any hazards in general. You don't want to trip over in the dark, hurt yourself, uh, anything like that. So just being aware of any hazards in the area, um, areas you might trip, fall over, wildlife in the area, just sort of getting to know your spot before doing this because it goes a long way, especially when you're in the darkness and um, making contact in that scene. And just for peace of mind as well. Setting up your equipment. So, preparation checklist. Pick a location. You can remote view or meditate on it before choosing your location or going to it. Pack your equipment, food, water and chairs. When you arrive at the site, ask permission from the land and any associated spirits to be there. Check for hazards like I just mentioned. Set up your equipment and chairs, etc. Connect as a group. This might be by doing energy work, having an OM circle, things like that. What's key when in a group is getting a cohesive collective group energy going. And an OM circle is something very simple where you can get in a circle, hold hands and just go OM, doing that as a group for a few minutes. Um, even going through things like Qigong, Yigong, yoga, exercises that can be fun, you can lighten the energy. Uh, make it basic so everyone can do it. But these are things that go a long way to start getting that cohesive energy going on. You want a really light atmosphere meaning just laughing, having fun while doing it, as well as taking it serious, but you want to be having fun. Power up! Hey! <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. Yes. Oh, yeah. Orion. Now, from that point, what I would state is start a meditation or the free-flowing remote viewing method. Now that you are in a heightened awareness state, be on the lookout for contact. Even your own type of method. It's got to be fun, but get into a meditative state. Start tuning in with the environment, your surroundings. That way when something does appear, if you're starting to tune in, if something arrives, you'll pick up on it intuitively a lot easier because you're tuning into sort of becoming one with that area. And if anything starts to arise, you'll pick up on it because it's sort of not what was there when you first got there and you really tune into that spot and that area. And from this point, you can go into the initiating contact method as well, which I've got a link in the description below that you can use and practice with as well. So going through this just briefly, breathing exercise. I say a lot of the time just to even visualize a color or a feeling that's therapeutic, loving, revitalizing for you. Imagination is creation. So it's not fairy tale, but this is where I say, even if you can't visualize, use the intentional feel and use your imagination with it, breathing in a beautiful energy and then breathing it back out and doing that quite a few times. Then going to a clearing then inviting the connection and then through this process ask questions through thought transfer which is where you're projecting your thought so be the observer and the witness of you observing and from that place any thoughts it's like picking up on thoughts that's not yours be aware of just thoughts impressions ideas epiphanies concepts this is key with contact now things to be on the lookout for Distortion of space and time. This might look like heat coming off a road on a hot day. Orbs, balls of light. Being touched but nothing is there. Objects moving for no reason. Unexplainable lights. Sensation of energy on the body or a vibration type feeling. Plasma light down low or up in the sky. Flashes of light see-through crafts in apparition form and thoughts that are not yours. Misty type apparitions around you that could be crafts or beings, fully materialized beings and or crafts, UFOs, change of atmosphere and temperature, so equipment failure, battery drainage, static on viewing screen or any device or activity and readings on devices. Also, be aware of people in the group that aren't part of the group as sometimes the beings teleport down and then disappear. So this has happened quite a few times. 
there's somebody in the group and when you sort of do a double take look, you realize not part of the group and then they can blink out or they can be there momentarily. Some people in the group will see it, some people won't. Depends on their awareness and where they're looking as well. From going into the initiating contact technique, continue to clear the space, meditate and tune in throughout the night regularly. So this is something where have fun, laugh, be aware, but I sort of keep it as a routine thing that sort of every half an hour, getting back for a few minutes into clearing the space, tuning in, remote viewing a little bit more, just go with the flow with it, but have fun. Like I say to people, with this, is it's very key. Do you want to be hanging around people that are serious and with that can bring very low energy sometimes? Or do you want to be hanging out with people that have fun? This is the same with contact. The bangs, we could say it's easier for bangs to come through when there's a light energy in the group. People are happy, joyful, blissful. They're very much like us, a lot of these intelligences in terms of they want to be around loving, joyful, blissful energy, and a lot of them emanate that. So when you're at that frequency, it's easy for them to come through and they want to more as well. So just be aware of that as well. And before wrapping up your night, what I'll say is give thanks, clear the space, and maybe have a wrap up of any conclusions, sharing feelings, impressions, and things as a group that you learned. This is where I've got to add here as well is giving thanks to the land again, sharing just your contact experiences. There's a lot that can be bounced off regularly throughout the night if you're sharing thoughts, ideas, where a craft's going to appear. You might feel a temperature change, call that out to the group because there might be other people feeling it. The whole group might be feeling it. You might be the only one, which means in some cases, if it's not explainable, there could be an intelligence like right next to you. Be talkative. Um, but at the same time, in an awareness state, a meditative state. So it's sort of keeping a fine balance between being active, joyful, blissful, but also being the observer and witnessing you being the observer of any changes, again, any thoughts, visions coming through, things of that nature. Now we'll go into some of the types of intelligences you may interface with, types of ETs and beings. There are many types of beings. Below is a basic brief overview list of what's common. Know that some of these beings don't need a craft. They can travel around in their light body, also known as their Merkaba light vehicle. Just as an example, this isn't all of them. This is just a basic brief overview. It would take a long time to go through all of them. And even then, I wouldn't even be able to touch 0.001 of a percent of what's out there. So. I can only go by my own experience and there's a lot of other intelligences out there that other people are speaking about. So this is just a, a brief overview. Andromedans from the Andromeda galaxy. Andromedans also could mean from the Andromeda constellation, which is within our Milky Way galaxy. Lyrans, Syrians, and there's different types from each place that I'm naming as well. It's not just one type. The humanoid, even, those that look human, they're throughout this galaxy and beyond, but there are beings with blue skin, there's lion beings and feline beings and um, beings that are all different shapes, sizes, different types of eyes. Some of them have purely black eyes, some of them have different colored eyes, some of them that the eye color goes out more, almost covering the whole eye. Uh, there's just so many variations, I can't go into it all. The Orions. Pleiadians, Arcturians, Alpha Centaurians, Cruxians, and Pegasians. So like I was saying, this is just a brief overview of some of the bangs, locations, and human terms for them. There are many different types of beings from each area, just like there is a vast variety of life on Earth. There's even angels that can come through, which is very common as well, and they work with all of us in their own way. The way I can describe this is they're operating, let's say, within God on a higher frequency. Let's say, and use this as like the wireless internet, that term I've used many times where God's the internet and our body is a computer connected to the internet. Well, it's like these beings could send out an email, pinpoints of their awareness going out, and they can let's say email or connect with many intelligences at once, meaning humans and different types of beings. So when you're operating in that high state of consciousness, 
you're operating out of linear mind. You can be multi-dimensional and interface with many people at once, which is how the angelics can do that. And it is a good question that people ask, how can the angels be working with all of us? Well, when they're operating within the field of what all creation comes from, that unified field, God's source creator, they can do that. That's their job. That's where they're operating from. So just as a basic overview, there's many different types of angels, archangels, what have you. Metatron, Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Uriel. The Elohim, and I'm going to be going into more of this in future videos. This is my main contact. So there's many different layers to the Elohim, I'll say that. It's not just so cut and dry like people think, but just for all intents and purposes of keeping it basic, our God Self, although there are different variations that left Source as well for different purposes. This is just a brief overview. There are many angels as well. List of other beings, inner earth beings, some connected to Atlantis and Lemuria, as well as others connected to off-world beings. The Guardians. These tend to be keepers and monitors of portals. So there's different types of Guardians. Uh, the white greys that I've seen, they seem to be what we could say, they've got their own consciousness, they're not robotic, that type, but the ones that I'm referring to, they come in different sizes, and they are what I would describe as worker beings that are trans-dimensional in such a way that they can physically materialise in each physical existence without any problem, and they're sort of like just those that are doing boots on the ground type work. There are also light beings that are guardians connected to the councils which oversee all of existences for Source as well and different pockets and groups of them as well. It's very layered. It's not so, again, cut and dry. Going on, Gaia, Mother Earth, it's a living being. Fairies, elementals, nature spirits, original spirits. Could be aboriginals, Native American spirits and even going back further to uh, other intelligences that were here and are here that predate what I've just mentioned as well. Lists of other beings going on again, plant spirits, animal spirits, humans from the future, humans from the past, spirits of the deceased and Bigfoot. Going into the lower light, this is where all beings are made up of light, but there's variations in the brightness that we all shine. And it depends on where we are at our evolutionary process, on our soul journey, and also what our intentions are and at a place of being of service to others or service to self. So in terms of the lower light, I describe that because they're not shining as bright because of where they're at frequency wise. So we've got reptilians, reptilian greys, draco reptilians, serpent beings, the archons, fallen Elohim, parasitic thought forms, and demonic entities. These things are real. Believe me, they're real. And it is part of what I say through most people's soul journey that you'll come across these entities as tests and even boot camp of seeing that you're at the frequency and you've done the inner work to get to those next levels. They'll rear their head at times. So this is where I don't think anyone's immune to them. And this is where you can get psychic attacks, marks on your body. Uh, those that are around you, friends and family, can we could say even be possessed for seconds at a time and say and do things they normally wouldn't do to try and um, trigger you and get you off this path as well or to even give up all this spiritual path. So that's why I've gone through with clearings and talked about that so much. It's very important to constantly keep up with checking in on yourself. What thoughts are yours? What's not? What's the fruit of the information? Is it positive? Is it about being of service and soul evolution? Is it the opposite? Again, I've talked about trickster energies as well. There can even be ascended masters come through such as Jesus, Buddha, Kuan Yin, Padma Sambhava, Mary Magdalene, Mother Mary. There are many more as well, too many to mention. So again, this is just a brief overview. There's also beings that are full-blown ascended intelligences that can be operating in their rainbow body and Merkaba light body. Um, and also source, God, the creator, the source of all things, and even going beyond this universe and this God to what's created that as well and all the other universes that have their own planes and dimensions. So it's up to you now what you do with this information. Use it, don't use it, mix it up, change it, swap it around, put it in your spiritual toolbox. That's all this is for. 
And I hope that this is a series has been very helpful and insightful for you as well. To add to this, there is a lot more at rise.tv of a past series that I've done called Ascension Teachings. There's three seasons of stuff that I've done on there, going into different tips, tools, practices at the end of almost every episode in that, as well as information to do with Ascension, otherworldly beings, and self-mastery. So thank you for joining me for this series. I hope it's been beneficial and love, light, and bliss. Thanks for watching.